back and so just jump right into this video two subscribers has reached out to me requesting to recreate a look that i did on a client and it's a nice purple look and also to compare the charlotte tilbury setting powder with the pat mcgrath labs setting powder so that will be incorporated in today's video now i will be showing you the eye look step by step and i will be showing you how the setting powders look side by side so uh, please stay tuned for that. So for my eyes, I will be zooming you guys in. Um, but the first thing that I'm going to take is my P. Louise base. And this one is in 07. You can use one that matches your skin tone or even lighter. It does not matter. But to be honest, this one is definitely in my reach at the moment. So I'm just going to pack this on. And the brush that I'm using is my Morphe brush. I'm not even sure if it has a number, but this is just a Morphe brush. I think it came in a set. And with the base, you want to make sure it's evenly saturated for the best results. With the P. Louise base, I do not set the base because I feel like the eyeshadows that I will be applying will do that anyways. So I do not go in and set my base right after I've applied it. So the palette of choice today will be my P. Louise Mini Worldy palette. And this is basically the color story. So I will be going in with the purples to re recreate. The shade I'm going to take is Check. And I like to use a very small, dense brush, especially if you have small eyes. So yeah, let's do this. And for this color, I'm just patting it on. And then the next brush I'm going to take is my P. Louise brush, I believe. And this one is in 118. You can see it's still small, but a little more diffused compared to the first brush. So this is almost like a pencil brush, and this is a little bit more diffused. So the next shade that I'll be taking is... Yeah, I think I'm going to take this shade right here, and that shade is called Seatbelt Sign. And I'm just gonna apply this on top of the purple just to blend out the edges not necessarily on top but a little bit semi overlap onto the purple so I can blend out the harsh lines on that first color placement You can see the smoke effect already and then the next shade that i'm going to take is do not disturb the next brush i'm going to take is my peaches and cream brush and this is the pc47 brush and i'll just show you guys how the brush is graduate so you can see that will pack on color because it's very narrow and then we have a little bit more diffuse brush and then this is a little bit more diffuse. Now the only reason why I'm still going in with a brush that's tiny but it can still diffuse the product as you can see um, is because I have small eyes. So I do tend to use small brushes if that makes any sense. Um, so the color that I'm going to go in with is Do Not Disturb. I'm just going to half overlap the last color that I've placed down. So I'm going to lightly overlap the last color that I've placed down. And then if you feel like the previous shade has been too diffused, we'll just go back in with a brush and just fix that up. so you can see how this brush kind of hugs my eyes 
on the position that I need it to be in. And then I'm going to go in back with my previous brush and just take a little bit more product and then just make sure that color is not disappeared completely. So it's like a back and forth type of motion with it. So the next color that I'm going to take, and this color is going to be placed on top of my eyelids itself, like this placement right here. I'm just going to go in with Mile High Club, and it's this color right here. And the brush of choice is a round brush because I do not want a cut crease type of effect. So I'm going to just take a blending brush. So it's supposed to look something like this. Now I'm going to take back the first brush that I went in with. And I'm just going to do this. So it should look something like this so this eye look can be achieved quick and easily so i'm just going to quickly do the rest of my face off camera and then come on camera when it's time to set my face so right here in this hand i have the pat mcgrath labs medium and i have the charlotte tilbury setting powder in number two medium so first and foremost this powder has gone through trial and tribulations but it's still standing so i'll still be using it in today's video basically what medium looks like so yes please bear with me and this broken powder but i like to use my sponge to go in with this not because it's broken but because i prefer the application with the damp sponge so i'm just gonna Take my powder and my sponge and just dab that on. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to take my powder and just dab that on like applies with the sponge. And I'm going to take another clean sponge and I'll do the same on the neck side. Guys, I did want to play a even fair game, but I don't know what's going on. Like every time I want to film, I cannot find anything. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So I'm just going to take this dense brush, which hopefully applies even or equivalent to the sponge, hopefully. And this one is a Zoeva one one eight make sure that to be airbrush flawless finish powder and this is in at number two medium i'm just going to take this dense brush and it looks like that and this is so tiny to look through hold on but i'm just going to apply it like so Just gonna apply a little more i'm just gonna apply it and just pat it into the skin so yes so basically this is how the powder is looking now so far i do not see no difference they're both very beautiful powders. The Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Setting Powder is priced at £35 and the Pat McGrath Labs is priced at £26. Now please do bear in mind that this one is just a mini size but I'll show you right now the size of the original so you can see the size difference. So this powder alone can basically tell you how much I love Charlotte Tilbury setting powder but this is just the size difference and let me show you the Pat McGrath and then this is the size of the Pat McGrath but as I did mention in my previous video when I did a full face of Charlotte Tilbury is that these powders give or both powders both the Pat McGrath labs and the Charlotte Tilbury powders 
both just give a very lightweight flawless finish don't give that much coverage but they do give you a flawless finish now i do like that they're meant to be matte powders or they're not drying at all in my opinion but yes i do love how both of them look but me personally when i use the pat mcgrath labs powder i prefer to go in with a damp sponge more than a brush whereas in the charlotte tilbury powder is more flexible if you're someone that likes to apply her with a brush you'll get perfect results if you're someone that prefers to apply her with a sponge you will still get perfect results with it whereas in me personally find it that i get to have more even application with the pat mcgrath labs using a damp sponge more than a brush so guys we've now reached the end of this video i hope you guys did enjoy this video and i hope it was very informative for those who are interested in either the charlotte tilbury setting powder or the pat mcgrath labs setting powder and also this eye look now you know i love apd's palette so i did go in with this palette i also did a review on this palette also and Y'all know from my review, I am in love with this palette. I'm in love with P. Louise eyeshadows in general. So this is just the finishing look. Um, so you guys can definitely comment down below and let me know which one you guys do prefer. Bye, until next time.